world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord Jesus Christ has given a command. God has called us to a serious business, taking his love, taking his message, taking his salvation to the ends of the earth. What are we going to do about it? There is an urgency. I am afraid of where I would be if someone had not told me this news. It has changed my life. What is God calling you to do? Are you willing to do it? Criminality. Crime. Corruption. The family suffer. How can I leave when my young people are dying? How can you do that? Because of the law, we are not allowed to preach the gospel outside of our church. So we pray God do something mightily for us. We just can't sit back and we just can't take our time. The task is urgent. God is doing incredible things in places that don't always make the headlines. God is changing lives around the world, just like he did with the Apostle Paul in the scriptures. Paul was a Pharisee who despised Christians. He made his mission to destroy the church and he was ruthless. But one day, God intervened and radically saved his life. Instead of trying to destroy the church, he was called to proclaim and to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ from one end of the Roman Empire to the other. He had a fervent desire to go where there was no church, where there was no witness. Paul says in Romans chapter 15, it's always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather it's written, those who are not told about him will see and those who have not heard will understand. There's still places in the world today where people have not heard the name of Jesus Christ. The fact is, the mission of proclaiming the gospel remains unfinished, and the task is urgent. Recently, I had the rare privilege of preaching of all places in Vietnam, a nation of 97 million people, but only a small percentage follow Christ. I want you to see the incredible things that God is doing today in Vietnam. Right now, there are only a small number of Christians in Vietnam. So that's why this is a very urgent to preach the gospel. The Vietnamese people, they don't care much about their spirituality. They don't care much about their soul. When I look at them, I feel very sad. They don't have Jesus Christ. That's why I pour my heart to pray, God, please save the Vietnamese people. The need to reach men and women with the truth of the gospel is growing every day. There's millions and millions of people. They're going to be separated from God for eternity. The only hope is Jesus Christ. We've got to share with them the good news. God is willing to save us, and we just can't sit back, and we just can't take our time. We need to get out there and get it done. The churches were looking for an opportunity to invite us. Many places in the world, it's difficult for Christians to have outside services to do evangelism. Because of the law, we are not allowed to preach the gospel to anyone else outside of our church. We have to ask permission from authority to do evangelism. If God puts a burden on a heart for something, pray about it and just see what God does. He'll use any of us. So we pray and we ask for God's help. 
God do something in the heart of the official. God uses prayer. God opened up doors and gave us great favor to some of the communist officials that said yes. This is a good chance for us to preach the gospel publicly to the community. It's so good for us. To be able to stand and tell people Jesus Christ is God's son, he's the way, the truth, and the life. It was uh, really a historic occasion. We first started looking at coming to Vietnam about three years ago. We're grateful to the government of Vietnam for allowing us to come. When I was uh, invited to uh, be interpreter for Dr. Franklin Graham, I was so scared. Standing in front of the big crowd like that uh, scared me. So I asked God, this is a privilege for me, an honor for me, help me to do my job well. And I hope many people will listen to it and come to accept Jesus Christ. There are many of you here tonight that you're in danger of losing your souls. And tonight I'm going to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to your life. Jesus Christ came from heaven to this earth to save you. By going to the cross and dying in your place, shedding his blood for your sins, if you're willing to turn from your sins, tonight God will forgive you. Is your soul secure in the hands of Almighty God? If you're not sure, you can be sure right now. So wherever you are right now, come. Come to Jesus tonight. So when I see people coming to accept Jesus Christ, I almost cry. What happened is so amazing. It was beyond my thinking. Dear Governor Governor, I'm a soldier. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. The need of the human heart is the same. Languages are different. Cultures may change, but the good news of Jesus Christ applies to all people. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus gives his disciples instructions about their mission. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. This great commission is still our mission. These orders that Christ gave us 2,000 years ago are still our orders today. But often we struggle with it. Sharing the good news isn't always easy. Jesus never promised that it'd be easy, but he did promise that he would be with us always. This means even to the darkest corners of the world. I want you to see someone who takes this calling very seriously who takes the gospel even to places that most of us would avoid. Mas o Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro is surreal. Criminalidade, crime, corruption. As families, the families suffer. There were times when the police came because of a shooting and we were caught in the middle. Two of my cars were shot full of holes. I was in the car, but God delivered me. I lost a brother. I remember once I got home and he had slit his wrists. My parents were desperately crying outside. He passed away because of drugs. 
na perda do meu irmão. When I lost my brother, God spoke to my heart. Da obediência, da comunhão com o seu Santo Espírito. God's calling for my life was to serve this type of community. São uma bênção, né? God told me, you need to take care of them. You need to preach to them. Amém? E eu te amo muito. Tem um amigo meu e ele tem uma... A friend of mine, he's wealthy and lives in a nice place. He tells me I'm crazy. He says, come to Santa Catarina. Your car won't be riddled with bullets anymore. How can I do that? When my young people are dying. How can I leave? Who's going to love them? Who's going to hug them? I can't leave this place. This is one of the great cities of the world, Rio de Janeiro. But like all great cities of the world, it has great spiritual problems. We were given this invitation and we're going to preach the gospel and give people an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ to come into their heart, to their life. The Billy Grand Association's event has united the pastors. I want to say thank you to all of you for the invitation to come. We have over 4,000 churches that have been participating. So to come down here and support them and to be a part of this and to work with them. We have been praying daily for God to move in every city in Brazil. That all the churches, all the denominations come together to evangelize here, to change the whole neighborhood. And tonight I want to take just an opportunity to speak to you for a few minutes. If you don't remember anything else, you remember this. Se você não lembrar nada mais, lembre-se disso. God loves you. Deus te ama. You see, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to save you from your sins. Tonight, God will forgive you if you'd like to trust him as your savior tonight. Se você quer confiar nele como seu salvador, I want you to raise your hand. Eu quero que você levante a sua mão. Dear God, forgive me. Perdoa-me. I want to follow Jesus as my Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Eu oro isso no nome de Jesus. Amém. Amém. As a family, we committed to giving our life to Jesus. I think it was the right moment because I, I had nowhere to run to. I came and felt the desire to surrender my life to God. I feel peaceful. It's a joy to feel and hear that God is alive and that God's here right now and willing to forgive us. Today, many people took a stand and made a decision. Now, they will be an instrument of God to transform other lives. Coming up. 
I remember when Christians came to minister at the prison. I was furious. I was like an animal. You realize that billions of people haven't heard the good news. And if we don't tell them, who's going to tell them? Do you see people every day with empty hearts searching for something they don't know what it is? That ought to give us a new urgency to declare the one answer. The world is big. The need is bigger. The mission is unfinished. We still have a window of opportunity to reach a lost and dying world with the truth of God's love. Go, speak, share. God sent his son to this earth on a rescue mission to save you from your sins. God's giving you a chance right now to give your life to Christ. All you have to do is receive it. At the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, this is our mission. Let's take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Everything is about the gospel. Without the gospel, there's nothing. There is no hope. Jesus came from heaven to earth on a rescue mission, and that was to save sinners. He didn't come to condemn, he came to save. The Bible says that he came to seek and to save the lost. When I was 22 years old, I didn't want Jesus in my life, but I just got to the point in my life where I got sick and tired of just being sick and tired. One night I just got on my knees and I said, God, if you want my life, you can have it. Uh, if you can just take the piece of my life and somehow put it together, it's yours. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died and shed his blood for my sins on the cross. I believe that you raised him to life. And that night, I invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart and, and uh, gave him my life. Praise God, he's still redeeming lost sinners, even people you might think are out of reach. Take a look at this next story, an unlikely rescue. There is an urgency. Only 2% of Mongolians are Christian. We need to tell others about this good news. It has changed my life. I am afraid of where I would be if someone had not told me this news. When I was a child, I dreamed of being someone who catches the bad guys. In the summer of 1989, I was accepted to study with the KGB to become a spy. I thought my dream was coming true. Prisons were a wild place at that time. Drinking, smoking, and fighting were my lifestyle. I was becoming like an animal. I had hardened my heart to survive. I remember when Christians came to minister at the prison. I was furious. I thought they were no good. I ripped up their Bibles. I beat them 
And I even sent others to steal their wallets. Then, on the eve of the New Year, I opened my locker and the book they left behind fell to the floor. When I opened the book, the words, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, jumped off the page. And under that verse, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. The strangest thing is, that word touched my heart strongly. So I prayed. Mongolian men must not cry in prison. But while I was praying, I began to cry. Now, I must tell people this news. Because what if I had not heard the gospel while I was in prison? Today, I'm very happy that His Grace gives us the opportunity to spread the gospel. When I heard about the Festival of Joy with Franklin Graham, I had a deep desire to participate. Mongolian churches are uniting in the gospel. The festival has equipped our churches and given them the tools to share the gospel. Today, 50 churches are sharing the good news in their communities. We are organizing this project at Waterwells three days before the Festival of Joy. For the people who come to the water stations, we are paying for their water and giving them a cup of coffee. Meanwhile, we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are inviting them to the festival of joy with Franklin Graham. We will connect them with buses that will bring them to the festival. for this moment for many years. May many people be saved. Jesus is passing by the step arena here tonight. The same Jesus 2,000 years ago is here tonight for you. The Bible says salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. There's no other way to God. Jesus is the only one to take your sins. He took death for you and me. Will you come to Christ tonight? Will you put your faith and trust in Him? If you're willing to do that tonight, God will forgive you of your sins. You come. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Hearing this for the first time tonight, I was wondering, does Jesus really exist? But now I believe. I realized that I was a sinner. I was touched by the fact that Jesus came to call unbelievers to salvation. I feel so full of joy. My soul feels such a relief. It truly is a miracle. 
thousands called upon his name. I can't describe it in words. May this fire reach every single household and family in this nation. Praise God, he's still redeeming lost sinners. God is changing lives all over the world. God is at work. And as you've seen Vietnam and all the others, God is at work. And we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support. We couldn't do this without you. Our commitment is that we're going to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And we're going to use television, the internet, radio, whatever means we can, open air stadiums. We're going to keep preaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you and God bless you. Partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in this mission of proclaiming the gospel through every means available. With internet evangelism, we reach the world with the good news 24 hours a day. Our rapid response chaplains step into the midst of tragedy to offer hope to the hurting. And we continue to share God's love to those who need Jesus Christ through Franklin Graham festivals and Will Graham celebrations. He knows your name here tonight. And as I'm speaking tonight, he's calling some of you. You may never have another chance like tonight to make a decision concerning Jesus. Join us in taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Visit billygram.tv or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you, we'll send you the Tony Evans book, Kingdom Encounters, Experiencing More of God When Life Hurts. Your gift can have an eternal impact. Call or log on today. I know it's not my words that helps a person. It's God's word. It's the power of the gospel. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, from heaven to this earth to take our sins. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. The Bible says, but he wants everyone to come in repentance. But you ask Christ into your heart, he'll give you that strength. He'll give you that power. But you've got to be willing to say, God, help me. By faith, trust Jesus Christ.